Not a very convincing replica there, Adam. But anyway, we're joined now by the historian David Starkey. He's been looking at the origins of Magna Carta in a documentary for the BBC. Welcome to The Daily Politics. Why so much interest in the Magna Carta? Well, it's the anniversary. It's the 800th anniversary of the 15th of June, 1215, at Runnymede. Magna Carta was not signed. Ah, you, you, so your wretched thing. It, it was, was sealed. Se probably that's sealed. Right. And we saw probably. there the... You the, saw the, the great the, seal the of seal. England being now, put on. tell us about the four copies. They can't be identical, I presume, these four they remaining are roughly, copies. Are no, they? No manuscript no. is identical. Obviously, each clerk varies. But these are the documents that were sent out, because not only did was Magna Carta actually agreed at Runnymede, copies were then distributed, mm. because this is a working document. And remember, we think of this as just a kind of grand constitutional settlement. England's in the middle of a revolution. London has been captured by the barons. The king actually has a gun held to his head to sign this thing. It's done under coercion, it's done under threat, it's a failed peace treaty. Within right. less than seven weeks, Magna Carta has failed. Right, so then, I come back to that question again, why did it and has it remained so important and significant if it was, as you say, a failed peace treaty for rebel barons? Right, let me explain. It was pioneered by the equivalents of Luciana here. The far <laughs> left of the political establishment the push it through the barons, which is why we always refer... You think refer she's the far left? Uh, here, absolutely. So, yeah. the abso <laughs> absolutely. Trade, we, why we call trade union leaders barons. They have exactly the same sort of self-interested view. Then, when it failed and John is dead a year later it's picked up by Nadine here by the most conservative section of the elite <laughs> which then no this is why it survives and another version of Magna Carta mm. is is issued in 1216 which leaves all the controversial bits out but keeps all the good ideas about law reform. Staying above the law or, or that everyone is... The whole business, but, but let's continue what else it does. Mm. It keeps freedom of trade, it defends the rights of the City of London, it defends the rights of merchants and you know what it does most of all going right back to Dig Digby Jones. No, just let me finish. Oh, I, we're leaving out the... I was going to say, are you not going to get Tom Brady? That's all I was going to say. Let, 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 me, let me just finish. What it does above all, and this is where the great <laughs> basis of Magna Carta lies, it defends property right. It gives England defended property right in a way which Russia still hasn't got, China hasn't got, most of the Middle East hasn't got. And this is the foundation of everything else. Is it? So you don't think its influences have been exaggerated in that no. sense, in terms of that no one is above the law, the property rights that you have just laid out? And would you say it really was the sort of first step towards the democracy we have today? It's not the first step to democracy. It is the first step to Parliament. Mm -hmm. But you see, it's a process. It's boring, you know. We all love an anniversary. We love a big event on the 15th of June. <laughs> the process actually goes on for 10 years, up to 1225. And in 1225, it's reissued. Of course, originally, that reissue of 1216 is by a little boy. You've okay. got to wait, and mm. Henry III, you've got well to wait. This is yeah. good. Uh, you've got you know, <laughs> alpha, alpha plus. Are you uh, all listening? You've, uh, you've, you've, you've got to wait until he's adult before it's actually going to carry full weight. And in 1225, this is what is the crucial thing. The charter is reissued voluntarily by the king, but do you know why? This is why all of you are here. This is why there is this programme. It's reissued in return for a grant of taxation. In other words, this is the direct Repres origin of representation. Of, of no representation rep of without representation and taxation. Yes. It's not democracy. On the other hand, the Charter is unique in Europe in saying that it is issued not just on behalf of the barons, not just on behalf of the church, not just on behalf of the rich, but everybody. It actually uses the word everybody in the realm. And moreover, and you will love this, everybody had to pay that. <laughs> it, 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 well, it, so in other words, so we, we have a, we've a clear origin yes, of the idea of high taxation. Uh, so, well, let me come to John Brady, since, yeah, since yeah. he wasn't, yeah. since you weren't included in, no, in that no. great historical background to the Magna Carta, do you feel proud, then, that some of the founding principles um, in the Magna Carta are still there, we can point to them, in our parliamentary democracy today? Yes, of course, and the fact that it has survived and is still relevant 800 years later is astounding. Uh, but I think we may need to, to, to do some more work in relation mm -hmm. to perhaps a, a, a written constitution. We're obviously about to undergo some fairly fundamental changes in relation to uh, Scotland, England, Wales and Northern Ireland and that constitutional settlement. So I think we may need to, to, to be issuing soon 
a document that, that underlines that, that new but not sort in of medieval coexistence. Latin. They're not in me medieval Latin, something that's well, accessible, accessible that. online. The other thing that I would uh, want to see happen is in relation to uh, a Bill of Rights that touches on everything to do with privacy, because I think that is an expanding area where technology now allows governments to, to really... Uh, monitor everything that we are doing and I think we need to set some boundaries for that as well. Are you as interested as so many people seem to be who, who actually entered the ballot to go and see these four oh, remaining absolutely. documents at the British Library? Yeah, yeah. I know they're going to I think they're coming to the House of, uh, the House of Lords, yeah, absolutely. Yes. They're going I mean, to be on display in Parliament this week. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. at the end of their yeah. time in the, in no, the no, British Library. No, no, no. Oh, I this thought week, they were... Yes, week. but yes, yes but yes, they're yes. going to be in the British Library first mm. and then they're coming here, I, I thought. Uh, but what about your historical role then, or the far left, as they put it, as David Starkey put it, in the, the sort of sustaining of the Magna Carta. Well, it was, it was an important uh, thing that brought together everyone and made sure that everyone had that voice. It was why Parliament was formed, to bring people together three times a year. And it's interesting that that's where constituency, constituencies came from, because all the, all the areas of, of, of the country received a copy of the Magna Carta, and, that's, and that was the basis from which they put forward Tom, representatives. You see, Tom makes a very important point. What Magna Carta did and what the, the, the succeeding decades of the 13th century do, they come up with something very much like the modern Parliament a House of Lords and a House of Commons with elected representatives. But you know, what was the latest wheeze in 1265, <laughs> which is the first Parliament, is looking ever such a little tiny bit tattered by now. It's all very well for us to boast about the antiquity of our political system, but things wear mm. out. And what's really striking is what the Americans did in the 18th century, because Magna Carta is their inheritance. Mm. There were also in the British Library exhibition, we're going to be seeing the Declaration of Independence and their Bill of Rights. They looked again at Magna mm. Carta and they asked the fundamental question, how do you enforce it? Right. See, and we, is that what you would like yes, to see, well, isn't just, it? Just quickly. Um, there are two choices. We, with our glorious revolution in 1689, took the choice that you will enforce freedom by means of parliamentary sovereignty, which is you lot. And what... Uh, America took the choice that it would enforce it by law and by a Supreme Court. Now, unfortunately, characteristically Britishly, we now fall absolutely mm. between those two stools because we still have parliamentary sovereignty, but we have the European Court and the European Declaration of Human Rights. The problem with the European Declaration of Human Rights, whatever is in it, the problem with the European Court, whatever it does, is that it's not British, it's not English, it's not native, and it's not seen to uh -huh. be. So, Nadine Doris, is this the case for the British Bill of Rights, then? Exactly. Well, I would think so, but, but can I just ask... <laughs> I'm quite fascinated listening to him. Did, didn't the Americans quote the Magna Carta in the impeachment of, was it Clinton or Nixon? It's Nixon. Mm. Nixon. It's Nixon. Didn't they um, quote uh, it? Uh, Magna, Magna, Ma absolutely. Magna Carta has actually been quoted in 400 judgments of the Supreme Court. 17 of the 50 states of America quote Magna Carta verbatim in their constitution. Whereas really? we, again, because yes, of... Don't. Uh, <laughs> don't. Uh, yeah, <laughs> some of it remains. Uh, 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 whereas we, of course, have repealed most of it. Yeah. Well, um, well, with, with 80, 800 years having elapsed, aren't we looking at this through a little bit of rose-tinted of glasses? Well, yeah. yes, we said it applied so, to yes, everybody, it did, but it didn't it exclude all, all the peasants who presumably were 90% or 95%? No, 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 we, we're, we're right, right. applies to all free men. Right. Royal mm. justice applies to everybody David in Stone, England. We only have a time, mm. time. What about restraining the power of the monarchs? That, to some extent, has been retained, hasn't it? Oh, well, I mean, for heaven's sake, that's easy. Our problem is not with the monarchy. Our problem is with the Prime Minister <laughs> and Parliament. Uh, <laughs> what we've done the, at the moment, a British Prime Minister has the abs who commands a majority in the House of Commons, as we saw with Tony Blair, has more absolute power than King John. There you go. And we'll leave it there. David Starkey, thank you. A pleasure.